Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsan Zavul, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how to make fantasy or historical stone walls. Having gone through and looked at how to make some sci-fi and gothic walls and windows in the last couple of videos, I got a couple of requests online on Facebook with people asking me how to do this or a similar thing for fantasy walls. Now this is going to be a much simpler conversation because actually there's a lot in Blender that's going to do most of this for us. It's just going to be a matter of making sure that this comes out in a way that's going to be easily 3D printable and something that on the tabletop is going to look good. So straight away, what we're gonna to need to do is activate a couple of add-ons. So as always, edit and preferences, and we're gonna to go to the add-on menu here. And if we haven't got them activated already, you're gonna to want to activate ball tool, which is something we're gonna use later to make things a bit quicker when we want to 3D print them. And the other thing that we're gonna need, which is the most important one for this, is the extra objects for mesh. So we need to have this add mesh extra objects selected. Once you've got those tick box selected, go to save preferences, or if you've got auto save preferences already on, then you can just close this. Now that we've got the add on sorted, it's really this easy. Shift and A, and where we've got mesh, all we do is come down to the bottom, continue down to where we have extras, and there we've got wall factory. And you will see that makes us a really nice fantasy style wall. We've got these bricks, of varying different sizes. We've got a window here and I mean, that's it. It's that easy. Now, obviously that make for a rather rubbish tutorial. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail here and let's start by having a look at some of the options. Now, if I click in the bottom left-hand corner here, we've got the masonry wall that we've added and we've got various things we can change. For example, we can start playing around with the size to make this wider or thinner. We can start playing with the height to make it taller. There's lots of things we can fiddle around with. Now, for me, probably the most important one to start playing around with is the bit with the block sizing. I don't like these really small blocks. I think they'd probably be fine, actually, if I was doing this for a building, if I wanted some sort of stone buildings, I'm just gonna use this for the end of maybe a building. That would look all right. But if I want something for a castle, I would expect these blocks to be bigger. So I'm gonna start by setting this minimum size for the width to be greater, let's go somewhere around there. And then for the height, I definitely want this to be much larger, probably somewhere in the region of about there. That looks about right. Maybe there. Now you will notice that this does have an effect on the opening and this can cause problems. We can deal with the opening later. For example, we've got the width and the height there. Um, the other one that I really like to play around with is the depth variance. So at the moment you'll see that if I come to the side, if I go perfectly side on, there's not a lot of variation here. There's a little bit, but nothing too great. And when for 3D printing, we're probably gonna do something like dry brushing this. I like to up this. So I like to have my variation being a bit greater. So we have a little bit more that sort of stick out and in. I find that looks a lot more interesting. And it's gonna make for a better overall just appearance when we do this, bearing in mind the painting. The other thing that I want to have a look at is the grout. Now, what essentially this is, is the gap between the blocks. Now you can do things with this that I've seen people try and I've tried myself. The first one that I tried was actually taking the grout down to a minus number. And I thought that would be a really good solution to printing this out so that we've just got these solid blocks attached to each other. Firstly, I don't quite like this. I don't like the way they sort of overlap. And second, when you start to deal with this uh, later on to try and make this one object that's gonna print, it does not go well. So I'm actually gonna have a thickness to this and I want this to be relatively thin. So let's go here and change that. So let's change that thickness to 0.05. I generally find that looks quite good. You can obviously add more or less to that depending on how much of a gap you want. I'd use this 0.05 if I don't really want to see the grout in between. Sometimes I'll play around with this a bit more, and make it a little bit thicker, and there I'd probably use a white ink or something like that to put the grouting in. Now, other than that, we do need to have a look at this opening, and you'll notice this isn't called a window. Actually, we can use this for other things. If I start playing around with the width, we could do things here. And I will say that when you get the blocks really big, this does start to have some problems with it. If I bring down the size of these blocks, especially in the height, you can instantly see we get something a little bit better in terms of a window opening, but you can also fiddle around with where the bottom is. For example, if I bring that down to here and maybe up the height a bit, you can see now we've got a door. So this doesn't have to be a window. 
or if you want, you can add some stairs into this. And there is actually an option for stairs here. If I go to steps, I can do things around. You've got these nice options at the bottom. For example, I can play around with the width of the steps. So we're going that way. So this is total width. I can play around with how high I want the risers to be. So something like that. If I want these shallow steps, I can make them come out further and things like that. So I can have these going up to my object. Now I'm gonna leave the steps off. I'm gonna make this window a little bit smaller. Maybe something like that. And I'll leave that there for now. Now it is worth noting that sometimes these blocks do have issues, especially around the windows. So this is gonna be something that you're likely to have to fix. You'll also notice that if I come here, you sometimes, on this one we don't, but you sometimes get these overlapping. If I change the width a little bit more, we get to the points, for example, here where this has got an overlap and we can have to fix this at a point. Normally when we okay this, we'll just move those vertexes up. So actually let's leave that there with this theoretical problem. Someone's got something that we like the look of, we can just select this as okay. I do just want to come down here and point out that there are other things here that you can do. For example, you can have shelves, so we could do something like that and you can move this around. So this can really be, if I change the height, this makes a nice window ledge if you want to move it around somewhere like there. So we've got that going on. I'm gonna get rid of that. We've done the steps. We can also do things like slots which would be something like an arrow slot there, which is great. So there's lots of settings here that we can fiddle around with. I'm not gonna to spend too much time playing around all of, with all of them. I mean, you can read them, you can do that for yourself. We've got the walls, that's sort of a good point to continue on. Now, as soon as I click off of this, we don't have access to this geometry anymore. Well, we have access to the geometry, but we don't have access to the options. So we can't do a lot more with this at that point, but we've got what we wanted and now we're ready to go. So importantly, this isn't going to print at this point very well. All the blocks are separated. It's going to be a nightmare. So we're going to fix that. Before I do, I'm actually going to add a bit more texture to this. Again, most likely to be dry brushed for some quick painting. So we want this to look nice. And, and if you're happy with this, keep it as it is. But I'm actually going to add some extra bits to this. So first thing I want to do is open up a file that we were looking at last week, which is making some geometry nodes. If you haven't seen that, there is a link in the description feel free to go and have a look at that. If you're not interested in adding some extra texture here, just skip forward to the bit where I'm going to put in effectively what is the grout to make this one solid object. So here we've got the geometry node file that we were looking at last time. I'm actually just gonna come over to one of these blocks because it's a brick. That's fairly similar to what we're gonna be doing. So I'm just gonna control and C and copy that object. Go into my other file and I'm just gonna paste this. And we've got it over here. And I need to get these bits to a similar size. So at the moment, I'm just gonna scale this up so that the blocks are relatively similar in size, somewhere about there. And importantly, I'm gonna control an A and apply the scale. Now at this point, I need to make sure this is gonna work. So I wanna get my block here, go to my modifiers and make this something that I'm happy with. So at the moment, I want something not too chipped, maybe something in the region of that. That looks about right to me. So now we've got that done, I need to turn these into individual blocks. So I'm gonna tab into vertex mode, click A to make sure everything's selected, P, and then I'm gonna separate by loose parts. And now each of our blocks is a loose part. And now that we've got these as loose parts, we could have done this before, let's fix these issues. So vertex here, X-ray mode, I'm gonna G and Z those up. Same with that one, so that we're not overlapping. And same for this one, there and there. G and Z, let's move that up, and that one, G and Z. So now we don't have any issues with overlaps. Object mode, select all the blocks. I'm actually gonna unselect these. So just double click on them. And this is because this actually does seem to cause a little bit of an issue with our geometry nodes. I'm not sure why at the moment. I think it's because of the sharp edge on this one and for some of the multiple edges on this. So I'm actually gonna leave those off and I'll do those manually. Select the geometry node last, control and L, and I want to copy the modifiers. And now we've got our blocks looking nice and worn, really interesting, and it's gonna add a lot when this starts getting painted up. And that would be something that I could fiddle with manually. For example, just going into vertex mode. And if I select a vertex, I can just control shift and B to bevel that, and obviously GG to move those around and add some extra damage. 
And if you're going to do that, do make sure your auto merge is on so that when you bring two vertices together, they automatically merge. So nice, easy way just to add some chipping in yourself. So I'm just going to do that to the other ones as well, just to make them look as worn as everywhere else. So there we go. And I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to speed this up to make that look decent, but you can see how much quicker having the geonodes is. I'm actually going to fix that one as well because it just looks a little bit weird, a little bit too squared off. There we go. And now I've done that, all I'm going to do is select all the blocks, press Ctrl and A, and I'm going to apply all the modifiers. And we can see we've got a nice lot of detail here. This is going to look really nice when printed out, and it's going to print out well but we still need to fix our one issue that nothing's joined together. So what I'm going to do is select all the blocks, press Ctrl and J to join everything together as one object. So that's the first thing to do. So now we've got one object here and then we're going to essentially need to fill in the grout. So all I'm going to do is Ctrl and A, mesh, bring in a cube, move that cube relatively to the center, press S to scale it, and then I'm going to shift and Y so that it doesn't change on the Y axis. Get it to the point where it's going to cover all of the bricks, not quite to the edge. So I'm going to G and Z that down slightly. S and then X to scale it on the X axis a bit. And G and X to move that along. And that should do fine. Always have a look around and see how far your grout is in. So for example, here, if I come to the side, we can see that's pretty small. I might need to press S to scale on the Y axis and make that a little bit wider. But I do need to check I'm not going over any of the bricks and think about how much I want these bricks sticking out. For example, is that a little bit too thin? If it is, just S and Y again, and I can fiddle around with that until I'm happy with it. The final thing is we need to sort this window out because obviously we want a hole there. Now, there have been times where I actually keep this like this and I'll just add what's going to be a window or some shutters, depending on if this is going to be a castle wall. Do I want this to be on the side of a house? So it should be a window that's closed off. But at this point, I'm going to actually cut that out. So Shift and A, Mesh. Let's bring in a cube. I'm just going to roughly scale that out. So S to about there to keep it relatively close to the edge of the windows. Move that along there. And then I'm going to go to face mode. Extrude that out. S to scale. Extrude that out. S to scale. Generally, I'll press X so it only scales it on the X axis. And that should sort my window out nicely. I probably need to just extrude that up a little bit more there. And then make sure I've got this selected. Go in close and select the grout. And then because I activated ball tool earlier, I just need to press Control and minus on the number pad. And we've got that sorted really nicely. I'm going to apply that straight away and hide that and then select my group that's the blocks, select my grout in the middle. Oh, obviously it didn't apply that, apply that now, and then control and plus on the number pad using ball tools, and we've joined everything together. Apply all. There'll probably be some things that we need to fix here, but this shouldn't be too much of a big deal, and we've got our nice solid object, everything connected together. The only thing that I would recommend at this point, and it depends what you want to do with this, is I do quite often, if I just H to hide that, I do quite often cut off the bottom so I've got a nice flat bottom to this because normally you're not gonna get these chips along the bottom. You're just gonna have grass and soil that's built up around this. But that's totally up to you and what you might want. So nice, quick, rustic wall. Let's hide that. Really easy to do. Now I'm just gonna G and X that out of the way. And I just want to show you one more thing that we can do with this wall which is something that's really useful and there's just one little trick that we need to be aware of. So Shift and A, Mesh, and once again, go to the bottom, Extras, and I want Wall Factory. I'm gonna make this a little bit wider here. Generally, I find having a total of somewhere around 40, so we've got 10 backwards, so 10 to the minus, and X, and then 30 this way, so we've got a total of 40 is generally the minimum I'll do with this. I'm going to make this taller, so I'm going to bring that somewhere to about there, because we're going to be making a tower. And with that, I want to sort of go with these sort of fantasy Rapunzel theme, and let's move our opening 
up a lot so the bottom needs to be somewhere around there but we want a bit of height at the top I might fix this now with this being a tower the one thing I want to do which I didn't mention earlier is fix these crenels which are the crenellations you'd normally get on a tower or a castle so firstly let's down this width somewhere to about there and there is one issue with this that I want to highlight and that is that these don't fit together perfectly uh, with what we're going to do so we're actually going to move these around and we're going to have to deal with that so let's deal with that straight away so we've got that now and all I'm going to do is go into vertex mode and I'm going to start fiddling around with some of these so the first thing I'm going to do is go into x-ray mode with shift and z and I'm going to select all of that top row there and I'm going to delete that so let's delete all those vertices then coming over here select those G and X and I'm going to align those to that side and now I just want to move all of these so being careful just to get those vertices none of the ones below and I'm going to G and X and let's move those along a bit somewhere about there and the sizing is a little bit off so let's just fix those G and X so we get everything looking about the same and then at the moment we've got the same issue here that we're going to have too much of a gap when we join these together so selecting all of these let's be a bit more careful there so just there and then i'm going to scale this so s on the x and go to about that that looks about right okay so now we've got that sorted we can set up this being our tower so this is really simple just click on the object add modifier we want a simple to form and we're going to have a bend on the z-axis and we want this going 360 degrees and we've got this really cool looking tower now there is a problem with this cool looking tower and that is that we've got now this massive hole because if i just undo this blender does do some nice clever things here for example whatever that sticks out so let's say if we're looking at this row whatever the amount sticks out on one side it's indented in the other so this should fit together perfectly in theory but it's only if I get my pencil going to be able to connect that bit or when it's going to it's going to put that in line with that the furthest bits that stick out so if I put this back on you can see that's what it's done we've got these bits are aligned but that gives us this nasty gap so we could try and fix this but just as a quick note this slider doesn't go past 360 when you slide it but you can actually just click on it and type in what you want so let's try 362 no 363 maybe a little bit more 364 that's looking a bit better 365 yeah that's perfect so now i've got our tower ready for attaching to some castle walls for example if i decide that i want this one I'll just S to scale that down, maybe a little bit more, and move that over here, and put that in there. And we've got our tower. So very quick way of making something like a castle or a small fortification, and you can just pretty much go straight in and print this out, either in bits that you're gonna to join together. If you do intend to join it together after the fact, I'll generally recommend cutting off those bits that stick out there, just using a boolean and cutting out that bit for example if i've got box cutter i'll just do something like that now the final thing i'll mention and just because this seems so obvious but people never really think about it when you've got these wall sections press r to rotate on the x and just rotate it 90 obviously at the moment we've got a, a hole in it but you've also got cobblestones here obviously we've got a bit too much vertical height there but this is a really good way of making a path really quickly and you can choose your width and do whatever you want. So a great way of making some fantasy or maybe not even fantasy, but just some sort of stone block pavement. If you found this helpful, please do give this tutorial a like. It means more people on YouTube get to see it as YouTube and its wonderful algorithms generally pays most attention to what's got the most likes. So that'd be really useful and it means that other people will see these tutorials as well, which obviously helps me out and hopefully helps them out as well.